what's Vladimir Putin's favorite song? Cry me a river. Hell, what's good fame? Teacher Eddie back with another reaction. Well, actually not a reaction. This has been a request coming from you guys about this whole Crimea, oh, Crimea, Crimea River, uh, about Ukraine and Russia, right? So a lot of people have been asking me uh, if I would do a video uh, because of number one, history teacher Eddie, of course, for those who don't know, uh, and number two, uh, my Russian American background. Now I say Russian American, but actually uh, my family did come from Ukraine. Um, they came over here in um, 19... 76 and uh they immigrated here uh due to uh religious persecution my family is jewish so actually my family comes from uh mostly from odessa so why is putin obsessed with ukraine what does he want from ukraine what is this whole hoopla about well ukraine had been under soviet rule uh and under russian rule really uh, for most of its existence, there was a small period, um, before, uh, world war. No. Yeah. During world war one, right after the Bolshevik Bolshevik revolution, where, uh, Ukraine was independent, I believe from 1917 to 1921 or 22. Uh, but then it was quickly gobbled up by the Soviet empire. Uh, and stayed that way until 1991, when finally um, the Cold War ended, Soviet Russia, as we knew it, collapsed, and Ukraine was independent. Now, why all this, you know, hubbub from Putin about Ukraine? Well, this is, number one, nothing new, okay? So, it stems from a few several different factors, uh, number one being nationalism and pride, uh, and also ego, right? Uh, a lot of Russians feel that Ukraine should have never been given its independence period after 1991. And in fact, a lot of people look at Ukraine as one, you know, whole when actually it's almost split just without a wall, uh, like Germany was, um, be well, I'm sorry, how Berlin was between East and West. Western Ukraine more identifies with Europe and has its own language, dialect, and everything else. Whereas Eastern Ukraine, which is closer to Russia, uh, actually is more Russian influence, speaks Russian, Russian is, is its natural uh, language, national language, and it identifies more with Russia. So it's not that Ukraine as a whole is against Putin and against everything that's going on. In fact, they want to be part of Russia again. Uh, whereas Eastern Ukraine wants and has wanted for a long time to be a part of NATO, to be a part of the EU. And in fact, as you can see on the screen, uh, where you see Italy, Europe, these are NATO countries, right? NATO was formed in 1991 as a kind of, you know, military uh, conglomerate that vied to protect each other from uh, being invaded, so on and so forth. These countries eventually joined uh, NATO, Estonia, Latvia, Poland, etc., uh, later on in 1999, and these were former Soviet bloc countries. Ukraine is the only country that's kind of in between, right? Along with Belarus and Georgia, uh, is in between Russia and, and NATO. So Western Ukraine wanted to be a part of NATO, right? It, it was planned that they would be a part of NATO, but then unfortunately, uh, it neither joined NATO nor the EU. In fact, it won, it, it took a, I believe a $15 billion, um, bailout from Russia and Putin. And basically this was seen as kind of old Soviet, uh, you know, back dealing, backdoor dealing. So there were a lot of protests, as you can see here by Ukrainians, there were even protests, uh, by Russians in Russia, uh, for, for the treatment of Ukraine and the, the, you know, all the controversy. 
So eventually the Ukrainian president, who was pro-Putin, pro-Russia, all that stuff in 2014, he was toppled, he was kicked out, right? Uh, and he basically then fled to Russia. So then Putin went after Crimea, right? Crimea River. Now, why is Crimea important? Uh, Nikita Khrushchev, uh, after World War II, had given Crimea to Ukraine as kind of a gift. It wasn't a big deal at the time because Ukraine, Russia, basically the same thing, right? If you ask uh, even a lot of people uh, in the famous uh, Little Odessa here in New York and Brooklyn, uh, they'll call themselves Russians, but they're actually from Ukraine. They're from either Kiev or Odessa, etc. So Crimea was important because Crimea is where a lot of the uh, military uh, was stationed, where a lot of arms are kept. So Crimea was a very, very important uh, factor. And Putin wants, number one, Ukraine back. Number two, he wants for all of the NATO countries uh, to revert back to what they were before 1999 meaning Poland and all those other countries that joined in 99, he wants them pushed back. And as you can see here, he says he considers it a necessary um, thing to do to immediately recognize the independence and sovereignty of the Lugansk People's Republic. <clears throat> so now Putin, of course, is getting a lot of support from Eastern Ukraine. Again, Eastern Ukraine more identifies with um, Russia. And this is the Ukrainian president who's, of course, imploring the world, which is really kind of on its tippy toes. We're almost at Hitler territory here with the appeasement. They're hitting Putin with, you know, sanctions and financial stuff, but they're on their tippy toes because whatever you believe about America, Russia has the biggest nuclear arsenal on this planet. So they're being very, very careful with this. So at the end of the day, it's Putin just wants to show that he's got the biggest swinging nuts in the room. Uh, number two, it's been a sentiment since 1991, really, from Russia that Ukraine should have never been given independence. Ukraine never should have been given its own sovereignty. Uh, this has been going on for a long time, too. This has been going on since about 2014. It's just now it's taken a much more serious tone because it's a full-on invasion now. So that's basically it in a nutshell. I hope that was helpful for people. But that's it. At the end of the day, um, Putin wants Ukraine back. Russia wants Ukraine back. Half of Ukraine wants to be back. The other half wants to be part of NATO. Uh, but this is a very, very dangerous and scary time. Um, and I mean, just look at what the man is saying here. Uh, Russia's response will be immediate for anybody who tries to, uh, you know, intervene in this that you have never faced in your history. So again, this is, this is, this is scary stuff because yeah, it's been ongoing, um, about 15,000 people have died, uh, over the past eight years or so. Uh, but now it's really reaching a tipping point. It's almost like I said, Hitler-esque in how Hitler was appeased and appeased and then, uh, annexed Austria and all that stuff. So also I want to give a big shout out to Vox. Thank you to Vox for putting together this video, which was kind of, uh, helpful, uh, along the way during my explanation to kind of point these things out, but we got to be really careful fam, because this is again, like I said, really scary stuff. Putin is not, uh, the most reliable person, of course, uh, not the most mentally stable person. And of course is not somebody who's afraid to, uh, so, I mean, for lack of a better term, that motherfucker's ready to kill. He's the Terminator, right? So we got to be, you know, very mindful, and especially I'm, I'm very disappointed in not only our president, but the way that most of the European Union is 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 handling this situation because we're really not learning from our past. We're we're dealing with a madman, a despot here, uh, and we're kind of repeating the same mistakes we made the previous times uh that we've dealt with this type of person 
uh, who felt like Hitler felt with Austria, that Austria was a part of Germany, that it should have always been a part of Germany, uh, it belonged to Germany, and that's the way Putin feels about Ukraine. Uh, but it's also, again, to show, uh, it's a show of power. It's a show of power to not just, hey, we want Ukraine, but we also want NATO uh, to get the hell out of here and to push back, to fall back to, you know, 1991 times uh, and forget everything that happened in 99, right? Kind of like a redux. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. I could always do a follow-up video. But in either case, I've been Teacher Eddie. Going to shout out the Patreons now, and I'll catch you in the next one. Fam! And shouting out the Patreons as always, starting off with the Chancellor tier, Alex, John Alonzo, and Windwalker. The Principal tier, Addison Lynn, Blue Tech, Chad A, Clement, Freeman, Laura, Muri Kakari, Nathan, Punk, Quiet J, Robin B, and Vijandra. I've been Teacher Eddie, and I'll catch you next time.